Like always, thanks to one of you, I found out I had the pleasure to play a very strong grandmaster, Eric Hansen. And as you can see, this account, it doesn't seem like it, but uh, if you click on it, you're going to see authorized speedrun account for grandmaster, grandmaster Eric Hansen. And uh, I wanted to show, you, to show you the game mainly because you're going to see a new idea, a new idea that we haven't talked about a lot, hyper modern approach. Let's get to it. As you can see, this is looking, maybe it's not so easy for you to see the, to really understand what's going on here, but in my mind, Black is playing such a, so, uh, sort of like a London setup, and I'm playing my King's Indian um, defense setup. Of course, color reversed, but all I'm doing is applying the same concepts we learned in lesson number, I want to say 87, where we learned how to play the King's Indian defense against the London system. Color reversed, I know but I used some of the main ideas we covered there. So going from the beginning, and by the way, this is a blitz game. Um, my opponent had been playing for a long time and he gave me a break, at least out of the opening and the middle game. So my opponent is doing his thing. I'm doing my thing, just getting my pieces where I where they belong, and then knight b to d2. You already know lesson 79, 80, we talked about the King's Indian attack. We want to break on e4, and after knight f6, I'm still not ready for it, so I keep on going with the ideas that we already covered. b3, I rarely played this double fianchetto, but against the London, I played the double fianchetto in the King's Indian defense. And to me, again, I'm playing my King's Indian defense against the London, but I am one move ahead. So this has to be a little bit better in my mind, at least. So after bishop e7, bishop b2, Bishop h7, prophylactic move, anticipating this e4 push, right? If you're a London, if you play the London system, you should be more than familiar with this concept or this idea of h6 in order to hide the bishop on h7. So rookie one, I go back, I get back on track to my e4 push, and uh, I think now I'm ready to just execute it. However, after my opponent castled, I decided to just play pawn to c4. And this is the first thing that I wanted to show you. One of the things that I like the most about the King's Indian, the, all of these hyper-modern openings is the flexibility we get. We believe it is important to control the center by playing c4, e4, but we just don't want to do it from move number one. We want to do it whenever we want. So after pawn to c4, my opponent plays a5, trying to make contact. I say, come over, and the moment you play a4, I'm going to play b4, and I get a lot of space on the queen side. Look at the pawn chain already aiming at the queen side. This tells me I should be playing over there. So after a3, we got knight b2 to d7, then rook a2, and this is the plan that I wanted to tell you about. Rook a2, the idea is... I want to bring the queen over, not only to put pressure down this file, but to put pressure down this diagonal. And this is very hyper-modern. We are putting pressure in the center from far away with our pieces instead of using pawns. Now, this is not something I came up with. So if you like it or hate it, don't, don't pin it on me. This is just something I've seen strong grandmasters or strong players see in the master games that I review, right? And not long ago, I saw Cuban Grandmaster Julio Becerra using a very similar idea against the London. So after rookie eight, queen a1, again, my queen is putting a lot of pressure down the diagonal. And after bishop f8, well, finally, I put my knight in the center. So trying to undermine a little bit from far away, knight e5, bishop takes, knight d7, I bring the bishop back. I'm still putting a lot of pressure. My Rook and queen could be at the right place if I play b4, and of, course, and of course it's coming. Whatever I do from this moment on has to be on the queen side. Again, pawn structure, but also piece concentration. These are the two main elements to tell you where your plan should be in the middle game. Pawn structure and piece concentration. Even the bishop that is on the other side of the board is actually putting pressure um, on the queen side. So after bishop c3, queen b6, b4, I have to play on the queen side. My opponent opens up, and now my queen and rook, this battery is very nicely placed, right? So after rook takes, queen takes, bishop g6, and needless to say, the only 
piece that is not really doing anything comes over to the uh, to the A file. Now, nothing here to brag about. Eval is actually <laughs> eval is actually zero point zero, but for me at least, it has to be easier to play as um, to play as the white pieces. So my opponent plays bishop h5, forgets about collecting this pawn because then rook b1 and we start putting pressure down the file. Something like c5 that seems so natural. Well, we could take, they take back, and sooner or later it's going to fall. It is just going to fall, right? And then you are left with an isolated pawn. Sorry, isolated pawn. It happens to be on the same diagonal as my bishop. Definitely, you don't want to get into that, right? So after rook a1, bishop h5, putting pressure on the pawn, not a big deal. My king that is not doing anything, I bring it over. I don't want to push the pawn and create weaknesses. I don't want to trade down pieces. I feel like I'm the one with the with an easier game here. So I want to put pressure, I want to maintain the pieces on the board. So after king f1, my opponent continues with d4. And of course, automatically we think, well, not safe to capture, we got to go back. But what if I could play something like pawn to c5? The queen is not defending anymore. So after queen moves, I take on d4, queen takes on b4, and I quickly played knight to b3. Very natural move, defending the bishop, defending the pawn. And this pawn actually keeps the b7 pawn in place. This is a backward pawn. I want to keep it that way. However, the computer gives this interesting line. So bishop e3, if you take me on c5 now, I could play rook b1 trying to activate the rook, get to the seventh rank, or even this interesting line with d4, bishop takes, then rook b1, trusting that our piece activity is going to give compensation. And there's even this queen c5 trying to hold on to the bishop, knight Oops, sorry, knight to e4, trying to hold on, uh, hitting the queen. Queen tries to hold on to the bishop. And then we could even go knight f6 and collect the queen. So very interesting lines. I didn't consider any of that, of course. Um, instead, I just went knight to b3, natural move, knight takes. We simplify everything. And now queen to b2, putting pressure on the b7 pawn. In this position, even though I'm down a pawn, I knew I had to have compensation. I have this line to put pressure. My pieces are better coordinated, but I need to prove it. So after rook b8, rook c1, energetic moves, queen d6, queen b6, fixing these pawns in place, and at the same time, making this rook very ugly on b8. If you compare my queen in their territory compared to their queen being uh, less aggressive, if you compare my rook on this file compared to this rook, if you compare my bishop uh, to this bishop, I have to be better. Of course, a lot of chess to be played, but after bishop g6, well, I just went rook to b1, I keep putting pressure, h5, and now simple tactic, I hope you saw it before I even said anything. There's a pin on the pawn, so we take on c6. Of course, it doesn't make any sense to take with the queen, because then they take and everything is defended. So we have to take with the bishop, h4, my opponent, being already uh, a little bit uncomfortable is trying to complicate the game on the king side, right? So h4, bishop takes p7, queen a6, I'm trying to get away from the pin. And then after e5, I want to just remove the bishop, but my rook is hanging. So I got to put the rook somewhere where it could be defended by that bishop when it moves, right? So rook b5, and then I could do something like bishop c6. I just want to get off the hook, right? So queen c7, queen c6. Queen e7, bishop c8, we trade everything, and then pawn to e4. Now, now, at this point, if you look at the eval, it's 0 0.6 for the white pieces. I mean, this means nothing, especially if you're playing against such a strong player. But uh, the main element now is that my opponent starts to put pressure, put pressure, we get low on time, and this becomes a disaster. But the most important part of the game was showing you that um, idea with queen a1 behind the bishop, the battery behind the rook, and playing on the queen side. The remaining of the game, not that instructive. Uh, pawn takes, queen takes, queen b7. My opponent, of course, he doesn't want to trade anything. He wants to complicate. Bishop h3, check, queen b2, very even, until, if I remember correctly, at some point, I just messed up. So, very even, 
Now here I'm trying to deliver or put pressure at least looking for checkmate, but I missed the pawn hanging on e2. All I had to do at this point, it was go back and defend. So just to show you how crazy blitz could be, if you don't know it already, we just kept going, kept going, check, check. And yeah, here time pressure, I simply got crushed. There you go. And that was the end of it. But again, main takeaway, the game started as my King's Indian defense versus London system. And then eventually you saw me play, instead of with e4, I played with c4. You could say this is the English opening now. And then lastly, you see this very interesting idea with queen a1. We see it a lot in these hypermodern defenses or hypermodern systems. And uh, I just want you to have it there. You never know when it could come handy. So with that said, let me know in the comments what you thought. I'm leaving the link to this amazing speed run chess bra created in case you want to check it out completely. And I will see you in our next video.